since the days of the Trust. We are a community club and, and everything that you, probably you ever wanted the club to be. I've been match day host in the Supporters Trust suite since 2006. You don't often choose your own club, it gets given to you in a, in a, in a, in a sort of way. And um, my dad, when he was a, a student here at Exeter University, um, actually St Luke's trained to be a teacher, started coming along to games. And uh, my first game was on the 9th of September 1973. So as a four year old against Workington, it was a one all draw. And I think, you know, once you get inside a football ground for the first time, and almost the younger the better, kind of that's it then. But to this day I remember walking up the steps in the old grandstand, that's where I, I was sat with my dad for the first game. I remember looking across and seeing the, the, the bank, there might have been the odd flower still growing there in September and um, yeah, I mean it wasn't, it was probably about a 3,000 crowd but you just remember as a four year old, you, you, you don't often, you're not in a, in a place with 3,000 people. So I just remember a bit of singing, I remember the red and white shirts but I, I'll always remember going up the steps, you know, it's quite a kind of iconic view of a ground in, in the old ground, so you'd go up the steps and there it was, you know, so you could look across the cow shed and the St James's Road end and then, you know, the old big bank as well and uh, yeah iconic scenes. Did your dad ever pass on to you what made him want to start following the club? Because obviously uh, not from the area, came down here as a student, what, what made him choose that? I think um, because he, he was from Somerset originally, but you know, he was teaching in Devon, he had a, he, he had a real love for Devon as soon as he started working down here and I, and I think you know, he was always keen to stay in the area, so I think once Although originally he was actually a Bristol Ro Rovers fan living in Bridgewater, mm. Somerset. But I think once he came down here and knew that this was going to be his base and then started watching here, I think it was, it was the, the club in the right place. You know, it, 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 he always loved Exeter as a city, passed that on to me as well. And, um, you know, it, it, there was a great love of, of Exeter as a city and, there, and the football club went with it. Who, who is your favourite Exeter City player and why? I mean, I think someone that I always had massive fondness for was Danny Bailey when in, in, in the championship year because that will always be my most memorable year, you know, the, the club's first honour being champions um, or first sort of real fully recognised honour. And he was just someone that epitomised that team. He was really hard working, but we used to see him down, down the nightclubs after the game and he was a really nice guy as well. But I think... One thing I would say about the players is that having got close to the players since the club kind of reformed its identity and being a trust owned club, I think the players have all really bought into that. And over the years, you know, over the last 16 or so years, there have been so many players who, who are really nice to chat to, to talk to, that they're, they're, they're more than happy to do the work up here, you know, and they're a pleasure to work with. Um, you mentioned there about the love of Exeter City and and the love of the actual city of Exeter as well. Is that one of your favourite things about Exeter City, the fact that it does seem such a community club right in the city centre and the, you, the players seem to connect well with the fans outside? Since the club has become a trust-owned club and there's been a, a kind of a people pulling in the same direction a lot more, I think that, that everyone buys into a project. I don't think this club back in the day had, had ever really had a project and I think since, since the days of the Trust, you know, it, it, we are a project, we are a community club and, and everything that you, probably you ever wanted the club to be has kind of, it, it's gone that way in the last 16 years and you, you wouldn't have it any other way. What's the best moment you've had as an Ecstasy fan? <sighs> Quite a few. I mean, um, I, would say, I would say winning the championship when we when we beat Scarborough here and won the championship in 1990 on the 28th of April, I'll never forget that day. Um, was fantastic. Um, you know, go back to the Newcastle Cup game when we, you know, we won that game in the fifth round. That was amazing. But it's hard to beat the victory at Wembley against Cambridge because of what it meant. Yeah. You know, the fact that we were desperate. Well, we loved the time in the conference. It was our reinvention, but we always knew that we were a football league club. And I think that moment of, of you know, and, I, and, I'd sw and, and the fact that we've lost there three other times, I don't really care, that, that the fact we won the one that mattered the most. 
Because I think if we'd have lost that one, then it would have been hard. So that day, I think, has a special memory. What's your worst memory following Exeter? Um, I think probably being on the pitch after the South End game in 2003 and thinking, you know, what, what's going to happen to this club? And, and there was a massive concern, although there were rumours in the background. I remember uh, being on the pitch and, and just sort of thinking, you know, this could be the end of this club. Um, and I remember Terry Pavey coming up to me saying, don't worry, there's a plan. It was ironic that I bumped into him, of all people at that time, that he lived in a caravan out here and, and was doing think, getting the whole thing up and running again. But it was, it was suddenly, and, and I think, I've never been as connected to the club, despite the fact we've done relatively well. Bearing in mind, most of my life we've we've, you know, been teams a team that's finished in the bottom half of its league. I think our record for years and years and years. I think we had about in 20 years we finished in the top half of the league about three or four times. That seems to be a regular thing now. I think young supporters don't quite know how lucky they are. Yeah. You know, so, but I think that moment, but you know, that moment, and I remember back in 95 as well, there was real doubt as to the 90, yeah, it wasn't 95, when we, when we, we just finished the season, uh, lost at Northampton, and there was real doubt that the club would exist, and that was when Beza Homes came in, you know, and then the, the council purchased the ground from Beza Homes. But, you know, there have been some dark days, and I think the, the great thing now is, you know, the, the idea that, if we're going to go down those into those dark days, a lot of people are going to know about it and are going to do something about it. I think back in the day, it was always, you never knew until it was almost too late. So the transparency and the openness now is what makes the club special. If you could re-sign one former City player, who would it be? Oh, I'd say um, without a doubt, it would be Tony Kello. I think well, I remember reading Match magazine in 1980-81 and the three leading goal scorers at the time, it was about March time, was David Kemp from down the road, um, Tony Kello up here and John Watt, but a load of his goals were in Europe. So the fact that you had somebody who was right at the top of his game, you know, and now he, any, Every, I mean, even looking at our team now, you know, if you think if you could, could have a goal scorer, yeah, you'd, you'd sign to Tony Keller. What was it like watching him in, in, in that season when a, a ball went into the box? Yeah, it was just, you just knew that, whereas, you know, sometimes we've watched the club and you're, you're sort of, you're thinking we could have 100 chances and, you know, are we going to take them? You just knew that if he, if he was there, you know, inside and outside the box, you know, he would he would score you know there was that kind of certainty that that chances would end up in the back of the net and just finally you have a, a quite a close connection with the players here and what do you make of the characters in in the Exeter City squad at the minute I think what's what what, what really impresses me is they're not phased by the result in terms of the job they've got to do in here I think now more than ever, I mean, although it's been really good over the years and the player's been really accommodating, but, you know, if you had a poor result, occasionally, you know, people would be reluctant to speak. But I think there's a genuine willingness that, you know, if you win, you lose, we're there for the public, they want to hear from us, people are really appreciative of, of, of the players and they're a real pleasure to deal with. The, the, the thing that I would say about this group as much as any group I've ever experienced up here is, you know, they aren't prima donnas. They're people who are very, very willing to help. And, and I always say to them, I said, you know, this makes us special because there's a lot of clubs whose first team players, you wouldn't see them on a match day. They'd never get anywhere near in, you know, wandering around up here and speaking to guests and signing this and doing that and coming after the match and talking about a game that they've won or a mistake that's happened. Uh, I think there's a great, the, 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 they're very level, there's a great humour about them as well, you know, I mean, people like Pierre Sweeney are fantastic value. I remember when he was talking after he, he got his two goals in, in a game last year and we talked about a penalty miss. He sort of looked across, he said, well, well, you know, well, why don't you take them then, you know, but it was, it was all said in a really nice way, you know, and I think that, yeah, they're a, they're a pleasure to work with on a match day across the board.